land is a world of wealth. That we have believed for three generations. If you had told me a few years ago that we would be implementing regenerative agriculture, I probably wouldn't be convinced. We've been doing the same thing for years. Farming does not guarantee you a profit. To find a way to be profitable year after year with the same land, that's a challenge. As we have tried to increase crop production through prior generations, we have impacted the soil negatively. We really need to see things change. I'm not gonna take the risk of losing something that two prior generations have worked hard to give my generation. I'm TJ Schiff. I'm president here at Schiff Farms. We've been operating for three generations. We grow corn, soybeans, wheat and barley, and grain sorghum. A lot of our grains go to the pet food and chicken industry. My grandfather, Walter Schiff, started the operation in 1919. It took a lot of endurance to start a business during the Depression. They were tough years. The ultimate goal was merely survival. That was how he lived his life at that point. He owned very little land. To maintain profitability, my father spent a lot on inputs, fertilizer, pesticides, fungicides, insecticides. He was focused on making the business go on to the next generation and growth during his period was a challenge. As a farmer, I'm focusing on how are we going to increase sales? How are we going to reduce costs? They're only rising in today's environment, so it's forcing us to produce more and more per acre to maintain our profit. Every day during harvest, I remember being in a tractor with my dad. I'm really lucky to have someone like him to look up to. My name is Caroline Schiff. I am the fourth generation that has come back to work with my family at Schiff Farms. I am just trying to absorb everything that I possibly can. Asking questions and trying to learn has forced my dad to look at the picture as a whole. Crop production is key. You cannot be a profitable farmer raising mediocre crops. What we're trying to do is back off the use of fungicides, insecticides, and even fertilizers, and be more resourceful. Good morning, TJ. I'm Alan Williams. Really look forward to talking with you today about what we're doing within regenerative agriculture. Hi, Alan, good to hear from you. Thanks for giving me a call. One of our major customers that we had a long-term relationship with identified Alan Williams as a critical resource. If we can reduce inputs and maintain crop production so our soil can provide the nutrients that it already has without adding more, that would be a success story for us. Regenerative agriculture is farming and ranching in synchrony with nature to rebuild, repair, revitalize, and restore ecosystem functions, starting with life in the soil and expanding the life above. Instead of relying on the array of pesticides and synthetics, they're going to come to rely more and more on the biology in the soil. Regenerative is a journey not a destination. My thoughts when I first heard the term regenerative farming were to be prepared for less crop production. It's not an easy thing to accept at first. Alan visited us and we walked out into one of our barley fields, looked at what we were lacking and what we had going for us. We're doing a simple shovel test, just digging up um, top six or eight inches of the soil and see what it tells us. Tell us a lot. We saw layers of compaction from our tillage and it prevents the roots from penetrating and therefore we have drought stress. 
with corn. Instead of doing the traditional 30 inch rows, we need to expand that to 60 inch rows. As farmers have tried to increase production, they go to narrower and narrower row widths for corn. It used to be 40 inches, then it's 30. Some operations are 20. We look at 60 inch rows. That was going in the wrong direction for most thinkers. In doing 60 inch rows, we'll have better water infiltration and retention, better microbial functioning in the soil, which will increase nutrient availability, better resilience in your crop, better resistance to pest and fungal disease, and better yields. So is that something that you might potentially consider? Alan Williams feels confident that we can maintain or increase production while decreasing our usage of chemicals. And by opening up the row width, we get sunlight to the ground. The cover crop both addresses the compaction and it also creates more tunneling in the soil for aeration, water absorption, and root penetration for our cash crop. We're running a trial here of 60 inch row spacing so there's a tremendous amount of risk there with uh, costs being what they are. If we try this on our whole crop and we lose 10% of our crop, we've lost the profit that we hope to make for the year. When Alan first suggested trying this test plot, it was my dad's idea to put it right out on the road where everyone would see it and start to ask questions. It was our goal for it to be the chatter of the community. I wanted to spark a lot of conversation. I think we're gonna see a big difference. Some of those practices that we were using before that the community is still using is hurting the soil more than it's helping. The soil is more of a balanced ecosystem if we just left it alone. And if we can get back to a more balanced ecosystem within the soil, it will manage itself. I hope farmers don't wait for our crisis to consider regenerative practices. I'm running the test really for our community. One thing I've always heard my dad and my grandfather talk about is leaving our operation better than you received it. The way to keep the legacy going into the fifth generation is to keep trying new things and take those risks. So my goal is to force change by using what we have and trying to limit a lot of those chemicals that we are putting in the ground. I believe the regenerative practices, it's not just row spacing and cover crop, it's much bigger than that. Those are the tools that Alan shared with us to get started. The real goal is to see different bacterias, the fungi develop in our soil. Farmers are addicted to improving soil. We love it. I'm never going to bet the farm on anything. Uh, it's too important to us. I don't feel that we're risking the farm. It's a very safe bet.